Seven years ago, the seventh generation of video games began, as the Xbox 360 launched. Microsoft had held its own against the Japanese giants Nintendo and Sony in the years following 2001, much owing to the success of their killer app Halo Combat Evolved. But the Xbox had still not been able to top PS2 popularity or sales. As early as 2003, the next box entered concept creation. Key figures were brought on board, including Peter Moore, who joined Microsoft after previously heading Sega of America as president, and ATI agreeing to produce the processing unit for the console. Then, of course, they needed the name. Xbox 2 was no good. Psychologically, it would have made the system sound inferior to the PlayStation 3. So maybe in part reference to the juggernaut that put the console on the map, a ring became its signature. Xbox 360 became the name. The opening was both grand and disastrous, though it sported a healthy lineup of launch titles, including two anticipated rare games and a console port of the successful sequel to Infinity Ward's PC shooter. A system shortage led to huge numbers of eBay reselling, and that was not the only common casualty of Microsoft's hurried head start in the race against its rivals. A technical epidemic, that is, hardware failure, became rampant. As one of the unluckier bunch, I can personally testify to returning five consoles, yes, five, I kid you not, in the 360's first three years. The Red Ring of Death earned its reputation, and I earned my fill of headaches and hangovers. But let's talk about the games. Well, launch titles included the much-anticipated Cameo, Perfect Dark Zero, Project Gotham Racing 3, and the top-selling 360 title for 2005, Call of Duty 2. <laughs> not much has changed. As these were all rushed in development to meet the console's release, few did much to impress visually as designers had yet to fully utilize the 360's hardware. It wasn't until games like Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter and Gears of War with its Unreal 3 engine that people got a sense of what next generation had in store. Speaking of Gears of War, Epic's third-person shooter became the signature of the 360, at least in its first two years, becoming the most successful exclusive on the machine at its release. Of course, if we're talking about exclusives, the iconic FPS juggernaut Halo saw its trilogy come to a close, followed by an expansion, a prequel, and another sequel to start a secondary saga. Xbox Live expanded, the online service becoming infinitely more important in a generation that witnessed the extinction of the retail rental, its marketplace and arcade emphasizing downloadable games. Eventually, newer models of the system were shipped, including the Elite and the 360S, which among other features would include the ability to install your games onto its hard drive, albeit still requiring the game in the disc tray to play. 70 million consoles after its launch, the Xbox 360 has come a long way since its inception in the mid-2000s, and just like its competitors, has seen a lot of change in video games. Blockbusters are bigger than ever, trilogies and assembly line development cycles revolutionizing the industry's economy. Storytelling has become as imperative to the game as the game itself. The online world has exploded in both shooting and shopping. Independent gaming has resurfaced in strength and a culture very counter to the one that wasn't even aware of this new thing called Facebook eagerly awaits the day when the next, next box comes full circle. Until then, we reminisce of the day the Xbox 360 hit Marketplace, November 22nd, 2005, This Day in Gaming.